Welcome to Sean the Door, the only podcast where I'm going to eat a banana right now because I'm hungry. I'm Willem, that's Chris, okay. and our special guest here, two-time special guest actually, our second Chris. ever returner. True. Here we have him, in the flesh, in the Joe Shiesty jersey, David Adames, Barstool. Glad to be here, guys. I know last time was, it was uh, just a great time. Yeah. Just a lot of predictions we made for various sports. <laughs> some came true, some didn't. But uh, I'm now I'm glad to be here again, and uh, we'll be, we'll, this should be fun. Let's go. Definitely. Oh, yeah. um, we're really excited to have David back on. Like, he's, like he said, we're going to, um, throughout this episode, we're going to talk about some of the predictions we made, uh, talk about what's actually happened throughout the seasons, uh, maybe make some more predictions, maybe talk about random things. We really don't know. Who knows? It's, it sounds like a normal episode of Shaman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will say, obviously, football is like the first thing that it comes to. Um, right now, I feel like we have hit like about half of all of our predictions for Vandy football. I still remember uh, Willem and I both said we're, we're making a bowl game this year. And looking like it's not going to happen. But, but the Mizzou game, which, we which I argue we should have won. We were three points away. We, like, that was a very, very winnable game. Mm-hmm. If we win that game and we're sitting at five, five and five right now, five and four. Five and five, right? Five five. five, 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 five. Anything can happen. Yep. If we're sitting five and five, we could pull off one of these next two games, and our ridiculous take of making a bowl game doesn't look that ridiculous anymore. Just it for wasn't that bad. just for clarity, I didn't say we were gonna make a bowl game. <laughs> I said that we were gonna go four and eight, um, and then unless we beat either Tennessee or Florida, which I don't believe in either of them, I think that we have a better chance of being Florida than oh, Tennessee. Oh, hundred percent. I think. Um, I think we lose to Florida by one possession. Ooh, I think, I'm okay with that. I, I think we keep it within the seven-point game against Florida. The thing is, is the strength of Vanderbilt's defense is not in the secondary. It is we are a very good stopping the ground, uh, stopping the running game yeah. team. Except if you're Chris Rodriguez at times, apparently. <laughs> um, but I don't believe in Anthony Richardson to throw the ball, and because of that. I think that Vanderbilt will have a decent chance in the Florida game. Yeah, we'll cover what they run, pretty much. I just, like, I don't even think they're going to... I just don't think that he can pass. Like, I even think if we don't cover them, I don't think he makes accurate enough passes for us, even if, like, our coverage is bad. Yeah. And just your point of our ability to stop the run, look back at the Ole Miss game. I remember I was there. I was in the Ole Miss fan section, which was, <laughs> which if any of you guys were there, was 90% of the stadium. But, yes. uh... But, uh... <laughs> that means you went to the game. <laughs> but at halftime, they were in shambles. Because they just up. they just kept trying to run the ball and we we just they just couldn't do it on our front seven. They're a pretty solid team. Yeah, yeah, they're ranked. Yeah, they have Quidshawn Judkins. Wait, wait, where are they ranked right now? Like twelve? Um, <laughs> he's they're in like the top fifteen. What's yeah, his, name? his they, they're running back. They have two. One of them is Zach Evans, but the leading rusher is Quinshawn Judkins. Quinshawn Judkins. <laughs> what what a name? <laughs> Why do I have a name like that, man? He is um the leading rusher in the SEC right now. That's pretty dope. Quinshawn yeah. Quinn Judkins. Wow. They're saying he's gonna. With all, this, down, yeah. <laughs> with all the speculation about Lane Kiffin to Auburn, they think that he's also going to transfer to Auburn. Lane Kiffin to Auburn? There's a lot of a speculation. No, that's not true. Uh, Auburn. As much as I hate Ole Miss and hate Lane Kiffin, I think I better not. Ole Miss why, is not like... Why do you hate Lane Kiffin? That's like, well, he's like one of my favorite... Co- <laughs> he is like one of, if not I my saw, favorite coach in all of college I saw football. An Instagram post where it was like ranking the most likable and least likable coaches. Lane Kiffin was number one most likable. <laughs> I hate this guy. It was because I was at the Tennessee Ole Miss game. And it's because of me. Him and his <laughs> oh. Because I can hate Lane Kiffin for many reasons. Uh, because he walked out on us. You, but he walked into the stadium, turned around, and waved. <laughs> and I'm like, then, I don't even care about this. <laughs> I don't care about this program or really this sport. But I hate this man with all my also heart. Also, we got cheated out of that game. That's not the point. That's true. <laughs> um, I-, I love Lane Kiffin because. He might be the only person in this world who hates Nick Saban more than I do, because like he he has no qualms about like talking about how much he hates Nick Saban. Like he was on the he has no qualms talking about anything. Yeah, he, he, he was he was he was on the uh, the Paul Feinbaum show recently, or or College Game Day, or one of those one shows. Of the media yeah, shows. yeah. I was on College Game Day. And and Feinbaum asked him about it, and he just like roasted. Saban and Paul Feinbaum in the same sentence. And I was like, what did he say? I, I, I forget the exact quote, but it was something like, 
making fun of Nick Saban and he also talked about like the show he was on. <laughs> he was also talking about like how much the show sucked. I was like, oh wow. That's pretty but, funny. But, that uh, like Lane Kiffin. <laughs> but if Lane Kiffin can go to Auburn and in at least once in his tenure beat Alabama, that might be one of the happiest days of my life. That'd be, that'd be yeah. cool just for the sake of the sport. Yeah. Auburn is but just I a, wish Lane Kiffin no good. I, I also wish Lane Kiffin no good. I don't want him to go to Auburn because I actually like Auburn. Really? Um, I do. Charles I, Barkley went there. Okay. Bo, Bo Jackson went there, so that's really? a boss. Yeah. Cam Newton went there. Bo, um, that's, I knew that. There's, there's a whole documentary about Bo Jackson, Charles Barkley, and Frank Thomas, the baseball player. We're all at, we're all at Auburn at the same time. Jeez. And I was like, that's, that's crazy. That's wow. tough. Their <laughs> orange is better than UT orange. That's not. It true. is true. That's true. Nope. Yep. That's UT true. orange is the best. Orange. I mean, nope. I mean, wait, UT is Texas. That's so. not true. <laughs> <laughs> the University of Tennessee. Was, the University of Tennessee was established almost a hundred years before the University of Tennessee. And, and U.S. What? and and Southern uh, no. South and South Carolina was established before Southern Cal, but USC is Southern Cal. Well, it's because USC is irrelevant. Oh, I'm sorry. South Carolina is irrelevant. <laughs> USC is actually. Almost. Right. I don't know. Be Beamer Ball is legit. Beamer Ball is not legit. <laughs> Beamer, be Beamer Ball is not legit. Have you seen the, the, the clips of him when he's down like yeah. 40 points? Like with, with, <laughs> with the sunglasses on? Yeah, oh my yeah. God. There was, there's a clip where, so do you, we watched the South Carolina Tennessee game last year, right? Yeah. It, we were uh, at my aunt's house, if you remember. Yes. Um, and we were up 38 0. <laughs> And they score a touchdown, and there's a, and it pans to Shane Beamer, who's the coach of South Carolina, uh -huh. and he's like, yeah! <laughs> and it's the most like out of touch, down thirty two. So, that. um, you gotta celebrate your wins, man. Yeah. The, the win. Okay. Well, uh, the thing is, is South Carolina fans are like very, like we are the best, um, even though they haven't done anything in the past, like ever. <laughs> The closest thing to okay, so does like almost everyone. Um, not, not Kentucky. Not Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you think about it, Kentucky has lost so much this year. Like they play Kentucky. I was looking at the I was looking at stats for the game because I said we're going to talk about the Kentucky game at some point in this episode. And Kentucky right now is six and four. Their next game is Georgia. <laughs> And so they're going to be six and five because there's no way they beat Georgia. Who do they play at the end? Probably Louisville because that's rivalry. Yeah, Louisville. Yeah. And if Louisville pulls the upset, Mark's, Mark Stoops is a 6-6 six and six football coach. <laughs> and that is just such what an owl program. for Kentucky. And that, is, no and, and that is the best coach in Kentucky football history. That is the best coach <laughs> in Kentucky history. That's a peak. You know what? They're 500 and they're darn proud of it. They've never done that well. well Ever. Do, Willem, do you follow a lot of like what people are saying about like Kentucky sports? Like I mean, you know, you know basketball more than I do, and so John Calipari before the football oh, season yes, yeah. was like, oh, Kentucky's yeah. a basketball mm -hmm. school, and Kentucky fans went wild. They Not were wild. like, they I were like, we're thing. going to contend for the East this year. We're going to be a ten and two I, team. I, I saw, I saw. I remember yeah, Stoops like, had a comment in response to that, and I think Will Levis also had a comment in fraud. response to that. Yeah. Fraud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> I remember seeing him on the sidelines after that Kentucky Tennessee game, and like as much as I root for Tennessee to lose, wow. seeing seeing Will Levis's devastation on that sideline, it's good to see. It was brought a brought, brought, te brought tears of joy to my we face. Beat, we beat them so bad, and I was so happy. Um, we gotta work on your Tennessee hatred. Why do you hate Tennessee? <laughs> uh, Just because going to Vandy. I mean, one yes, two. This is a really obscure hatred to have, and there's no justification for it. Okay. I dislike Peyton Manning. I know that's a really controversial really? thing to say. Like, not, like not, as, not as a, like a person, person, not as a person at all. A I look at, yeah, the same way I look at LeBron. I think LeBron is an amazing person. He does countless good for this world. Like, he built a school. He does, yeah. had, donates, know. donates millions of char to charity. Amazing person. I don't like the way he plays the game. I don't like Why? Him. I don't like LeBron. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not oh, but Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, I think people always, like, people always give him credit for that second Super Bowl that he beat, he beat oh, Carolina. Oh, Denver? Uh, I, I, I could have did not bring that I, much to the table. I, I could have won that Super Bowl as starting Come quarterback. On, no. All he had to do was hand the ball off to C.J. Anderson and then, let the, de and then let the defense let work. The defense score about 30 million points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but... <laughs> I'm, and I'm not saying he's overrated by any means. No, he's to a me, top two quarterback of all time. I put him top five. You say top two? Chris? I would say so. Yeah, I think he's number two. Interesting. 
I think I don't know. I think Tom Brady's number one. Also, s- side note, I've heard this discussion a lot over the last two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are putting to bed the Aaron Rodgers is a more talented or better passer slash quarterback than Tom Brady. People have been making trying to make that point. I think you can say he's more talented and not be better. I think that Tom Brady is not a, the greatest talent in the whole history of the game, but he definitely is the best quarterback. I in think the game. Aaron. Nobody has the talent, the pure raw ability. I would ability. say Patrick Mahomes has more talent than Aaron Rodgers. There you go. Dan Marino was also more talented than Aaron Rodgers. I never, Dan I never watched Marino. him though. D- Dan, Mar- like Dan, Marino. Dan Marino. His biggest criticism was never winning a Super Bowl. True. But his defenses, the years he of Dan Marino's prime, his defenses allowed on average between like twenty eight and thirty two points a game. That's Miami for you. Couldn't, yeah. you. couldn't you say that about Aaron Rodgers' defenses, though? No, he yeah, he, he, he always had Jair Alexander, who was always a top five That's defensive Jair back. Of like Jair Alexander. Is BJ like Ro- BJ BJ though. Raji was an elite defensive tackle. I think, but Jair Alexander's been in the league like five years. You know, like Aaron Rodgers has been on playoff runs since like what 20, 2010? Yeah. He, he, he's been solid for a he's, he scored a whopping three points against the 49ers in the playoffs last year I'm not I'm not saying that <laughs> that was something <laughs> I, I'm not uh, I, I, don't, I think Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback oh I think so too he's but top he's, 10 oh easily I would agree yeah. but I, uh, I think I, I think Peyton Manning is a strong team. yeah but um, with that being said, huge forehead, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't like that. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, like that. And, 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 I, and I will say, when no. when it comes to Monday Night Football, I always watch them. I always watch the, the Manning man, cast. The Manning, cast the Manning casts fun. are always fun. Yeah. Do you know that Cooper was like? Cool. He was the best athlete out of all. He of them. was like an insane athlete, and like tore everything, and he couldn't play anymore. I thought I thought it was like he had like a heart condition that or he maybe, couldn't play. It, there was, was like, like some sort of. But like he was, he was like a wide receiver. He was yeah. like a five star wide receiver. And Peyton and Eli, I've heard countless times say he was the best athlete, and if he could have played, he would have been better in the NFL than either of them were. And that's which, ridiculous. Which is oh, which? Boy. I'm sure I'm sure part of that is them just giving him his flowers. But yeah. if there, I'm sure there's also a semblance of truth to it. I mean, but he was like a five-star athlete yeah. in high school. He was like, he was a basketball player too. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is he, isn't he like a lawyer? He's like a pharmaceutical he's, sales he's, rep. Like he's father. He's sales father rep. to Arch Manning. Yeah. <laughs> Arch Manning's overrated. <sighs> he played against nobody in high school. He's he, he's living off the Manning name, and don't get me wrong, True. like I enjoy the Manning name because I How enjoy Tennessee. He he's, he's going to be a freshman in college next year, right? Yeah, Texas. At Texas. Woo. You think he starts over Quinn Ewers? No, mm-hmm. he doesn't start over Quinn Ewers. I think Arch Manning is overrated. I don't think. I think he's going to be fine. He's the LeBron James Jr. of football. Yeah, he's like Brawny. Yeah. Where like I mean, like he's talented. And he'll be fine. He's not great. But Lord, is he somebody's son? And that's it. (laughs) I just, I don't think that he is going to be the superstar that he is made out to be. I don't think his competition in high school was very high. I've actually like done a decent amount of research on this. He played in like 3A. He played in like a a really bad division in high school. And granted it was. Isn't Powell 3A? You can only only play who they put you up against. But that doesn't mean that you should be like the best prospect oh, in I'm, years. You I know? I don't disagree. I just all it's 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 hard. I I'm also just like when it comes to like critiquing competition levels, mm-hmm. you can only play who's on the field against you. That's I the way I've. I some prep school. Yeah, in high school it's different though because you can transfer to those like top tier schools if yeah. you're if you're Arch Manning. Yeah, you and you have and you have the resources yeah. and the ability. Yeah. Yeah. With that being said, we're kind of on a way yeah, far tangent. tangent. Um, we were talking about Vandy and our predictions. Um, I think that one of the things that you guys really hit the nail on the head on um, was you from the start were confident about our NIU win. And I was not. It's Northern Illinois. Sure. And we were down 14 points in the third quarter. That's, <laughs> that's, that's weird. It's Northern Illinois. Sure. It's it's not even regular Illinois. Illinois <laughs> as a whole. Illinois is a No, I would season. say Illinois is having like their best football season in years not right now, right? Yeah. That's, oh, oh. That's, that's not even what. It's just but the North. I was saying that, you know, they were the MAC champions last year. And I, Maction. Maction. <laughs> um, Maction, Maction has been getting me through Tuesdays and Wednesdays exactly. for the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that there's Tuesday, Wednesday, MAC football. Yeah, there's a streak like it's in from like from like action. from like late October to like mid November. There's like 27 straight days of football, whether between college and the NFL, because of Maxion going on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's insane. But um, 
It's it's smart when you think about it though, because that's probably when they get the most views. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Like like because if if they're if they're if they're airing if they're airing, if they're airing their games Central at the same Michigan. at the same time, <laughs> SEC and Big Ten games are going on. Nobody's gonna watch yeah, them. They're not gonna get on those like big. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, Ak- Akron is in there. Akron, the Zips. I, yeah, I Western think. Michigan I think. The, oh, I think the, the all the directional Michigans. I think Central Michigan yeah, is in Central there. Too. Yeah, Central Michigan is in there. <laughs> I don't know. I think. <laughs> that's I think, just what I, I, I call. That's, 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 that, 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 that's, that's just what I call. Um, Toledo is in the. Map. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like. It's just like oh, it's, it's the WCC. Basically. It's just yeah. It's, it's just, the WCC. It's just it's just like Ohio, Illinois, and Michigan schools. Yeah, that's, pretty that's much. like really what it is. What does uh, Mac stand for? Is Midwestern that Athletic Conference? I think. I made that up. It's not true. I, I think it's Midwest. It it's Midwest something conference. It's either. I, I would assume it's athletic. Conference. It could be athletic. It could yeah. be like Atlantic or something like that. Maybe I don't know. Mm, but like that wouldn't make sense. No. You're right. Yeah. Apocalypse. <laughs> true. But with that being said, I thought NIU was going to beat us, and in fairness, they looked like they were going to beat us until the third quarter. But you guys did sway me in that in that episode, to saying that I thought we were going to beat them. So we all we all kind of hit the nail on the head, but you guys more than me, for sure. Um, so we start off three 0 We go into SEC play, and um, we we start off the season rough because we started off with like a gauntlet of SEC. Yeah, games. Would, what was it? Alabama, Georgia, and Ole Miss. In, yeah, yeah, and there was like. I don't remember who was in between that, but there was somebody in between that as well that was, like, maybe winnable, but, like, not really. Um, I can pull up the schedule. Like, I don't know why. Because I, I think it was – we might have had the bye week between. Oh, maybe. I think, I think it was we had the yeah. bye week between. And, and, the, 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 and those, the in those between, weeks, yeah. the bye week feels like a win. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so just our schedule was Alabama, Ole Miss, Georgia, and then – okay, yeah. We had the bye week. Yeah. Um, and then was Mizzou after it, that? Yeah. It was, I'm sorry, it was Alabama bye week, Ole Miss, uh, Georgia. Bye week, Ole Miss? That's good. Yeah, it nice. was bye week, Ole Miss. Um, I would say that that bye week is where, I think we were a much better team after the bye, even yes. if we lose to Georgia 0-55. to I mean, we were only down like two scores. What did we lose to Georgia last year? I think like 62 to zero. That's a game. Hey. That's a, it's improvement. G- give it another, let me do the math, another, yes. another eight years. We we beat them zero to negative points if you just extrapolate the data. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you know we only let them score twice a quarter. That's not bad. That's <laughs> not bad. Hey, um, that doesn't know. It okay, was a great qu- question about Georgia. What are your guys' opinions on Stetson Bennett? He's mediocre. He's a bum. That's what I thought coming into this year. He's still and here. and I see flashes and I'm just like he'll have like a great throw occasionally. He played his best game ever against Tennessee. <laughs> oh yeah, let's be clear. You guys, you yeah. He played his best <laughs> game ever against. Tennessee. I think I think it's part partially recency bias because that's the game I'm thinking of. Right. Where he where looked like a stud and I was the, like, who is this car salesman? Where, <laughs> who is absolutely where, where, where the wholesome fan base of University of Tennessee Knoxville. I call them that because they're UTK, not UT. They are but, UT. Uh, but, uh, 100%. Knoxville community. To the college, but uh, but anyways, so many of those. They they try, <laughs> they spent they somehow Stetson Bennett's phone number got leaked. I don't know if you guys heard we, this yes. story. Yeah, we leaked his phone number. Yeah, they leaked game. his phone number and spent all night calling him trying to keep him awake. <laughs> yeah. So that's why when he got that rushing touchdown he, to start like, the game, his celebration was like, call, call me, call me. I'm like, that was hard. That's tough. That yeah. was that that's was tough. awesome. Just oh seeing that like God. personality come out of him. But that being said, Stetson Bennett seems like a perfectly likable guy. He will be the best car dealership owner in exactly. Ath- Athens, Georgia history. He will have a massive Buick. His dealership is. He's gonna, gonna be nuts. stay in Athens for the rest of his life. He's gonna be known all the diners. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna have like lifetime passes, the Golden Corral. Oh my God. He's gonna- <laughs> or, 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 or a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it will be the Stetson Bennett Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. And he, he might get a seventh Lord, round pick in the NFL, jump around wow. on practice squads, and then he'll be done. <laughs> Lord. He's gonna have some cheesy line for his card. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, it's gonna be like I brought home the chips and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like those those low budget commercials you always yeah. see. It's just gonna be him on there. <laughs> I can do a check box <laughs> <and> farmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He ends up in the Stetson commercials. Bennett. Yeah, exactly. Him with Shaq. <laughs> Shaq uh, Stetson um, Bennett, if you see this, please don't take it out on my LSU Tigers. <laughs> the thing he's going to. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> LSU doesn't stand a chance, in my opinion. 
They don't. I just don't know. They're a good know. team, but they're not a great they're not, team. They're not Georgia. Georgia's a darn good team, man. I think Tennessee has a chance. I think Tennessee is the only team in the nation with a chance of beating Georgia, and it'd be on a neutral field. We can't play in the in the stadium. Of Georgia. I think I, I think I think Ohio State. I think Ohio State would play them well. I think I think Ohio State's kind of fraudulent. I think they. I do think they lose to Michigan though. I think Ohio State beats Michigan, but would get absolutely torched by Georgia. Because I, I mean, Georgia has the best defense in the nation by a, by a mile. Yeah. Um. Which is ridiculous that their defense looks even better than they did last year. Wait, considering they had, like, what, seven first-round yeah. picks or something ridiculous like that? Mm-hmm. I was, um, I think that the only team that has the offensive firepower, if they are on to keep up with Georgia's defense, is Tennessee. Yeah, I would agree. I, I agree. I mean, you guys did play him on a neutral field and we saw what happened, but... Wait, what? We didn't play him on a neutral field. Oh, was that at Sanford? I thought, yeah. it was in, I thought it was in Atlanta. No, it was in Sanford. Oh, why well, I think it was in like... And we only lost by 14 points. That score is not representative of the way the game went, though. We definitely... Shot. I will say that it, it, felt, I, I it think felt worse than it was. Your offensive line just couldn't, couldn't hang in there. Like, Hen- they, Hendon Hooker had no always, time in the pocket. They had been all year, and I think that's because of crowd noise. Because we yeah, all started yeah, like yeah. five times. I think that's yeah. the environment thing. Mm-hmm. Put it in a neutral site, you're not going to get the ball starts. Yeah. You're not going to get that. I actually did watch that game for the final <laughs> It, there was also just like a couple random things where like Tennessee is they're built off explosive p- plays down yeah. the field, and we just like missed like two or three of them. Where I mean, I think that that would make the game close. I think that we we if it's, we it's one of those games you beat yourself more than Georgia. I mean, no, Georgia, Georgia beat us. Oh, Georgia beat you guys. But, but we I, did not I help think, ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that we pro- I think that we'd probably lose again if we played them. But I think that it would probably be a one score game. I think anyone would lose if they played them. But y'all have the best chance of that. Yeah, we'll see. We don't even know if we're gonna make in the playoffs. So, so, so now, so now, if somebody offered you Georgia versus the field for a national championship, are you taking Georgia? I'm taking Georgia. Okay. I'm taking Georgia. I think I think I'm taking Georgia as well. Georgia. So who do they have to be? TCU, well, Alabama. So right now, nah, Alabama, Alabama's 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 Alabama. Yeah. Um, it would be TCU, TCU and the winner of Ohio, State. Ohio State versus whoever else makes it in, because Ohio State and Michigan aren't both making it in right now. So I think no. that, I think nah. that what it will be is here's what I hope it is anyway. If Tennessee looks impressive these next couple weeks and wins out, it'll be Georgia versus Tennessee one and four, and it's, then the winner of Ohio State. Michigan. You gotta got hope two. TCU loses though, because if they go undefeated and win the Big Twelve, they're gonna, they're gonna put them in there. Yeah, I think so. I think TCU will be three. I think that it will be, it'll be Georgia winner of Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, Tennessee. Oh yeah, four right now. TCU because it's it's it's, it's Georgia, Michigan. Ohio State, and Michigan are two oh, three. Oh yeah, I forgot about and that. You, yeah, yeah. and then and then Tennessee five and LSU six. Wow. Yeah, and so I think that what the you know Georgia, I'm not sorry, but Ohio State, Michigan play. One of them will get knocked down to like five or six. I think that they'll get knocked down to six. I think LSU will jump to five. The, the one team we haven't mentioned yet is the one loss USC Trojans. I don't you, care. You, about don't, them. you don't think they no. they went out when the, the I know the Pac-12 is a fraudulent conference. It's a terrible <laughs> conference. Like ter- first of all, now. I think they're gonna hey, lose. Hey, Washington like, beat Oregon. <laughs> right, they but did. I think that that only hurts USC. Yeah. I think that you're gonna take a one loss SEC team with their one loss being Georgia. Over a one-loss Pac-12 champion, and and that's a stance I've always had because people always claim the SEC bias where it's like, but they're the best if, conference. If if a team like Alabama or Georgia that's been so dominant, I guess Georgia recently, Alabama yeah. for the last 10, 15 years, but uh, <laughs> uh, if they 40. if they went out and go undefeated or one loss and win the conference, and they go, and everybody's like, oh look how good these teams are, but if they but if it's a more competitive year. Like, like with the exception of Georgia, we have this year where we have Tennessee, LSU, and Alabama, and Ole Miss all in the top 15. Everybody's like, oh, that just shows how much of a competitive conference it is. But, that same, but people always criticize it because that logic doesn't apply to conferences like the Pac-12. It's because the Pac-12 it just simply isn't as good of a conference as the SEC is. It's not because there's this bias. It's because you they take, don't have the talent. You take <laughs> a middle-of-the-pack SEC team. Let's, who, could, who could we say? South Carolina. South Carolina? I think they're a perfectly mid team. I was gonna say Auburn, but but South Carolina also. I think South Carolina is a better team than Auburn. Okay, so we'll go with South Carolina. Arkansas. Carol- Arkansas. 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 Okay, we'll go we'll go with That's yeah. perfect. Who, who, so poorly mid. Who they just they just played arguably the best game of the season against LSU, even though they lost. And it was 13-10. Right? Yeah, because Harold Ooh. Harold Perkins, true freshman, animal. 
he had like four sacks, two forced fumbles. Yeah. Like insane. And that Great would piece. I think it would be I think he might but be Oregon. I think I think you take that <laughs> South you take you take Arkansas cuz yeah. cuz we said Arkansas. You put them against any middle of the road team from another Power 5 conference. Against WSU. They they manhandle and them. I think Arkansas beats every team in the Big 10 except Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State. I don't think they beat Penn State. Maybe yeah, maybe Penn State. But right. but with the except with the exception of those three, yeah. I ACC they probably lose to Clemson and nobody else. I think they beat Pitt. I think that they lose maybe I, to USC. I was gonna say they might lose to Wake Forest because just because I'm a big Sam Hartman guy. I don't Sam think Sam Hartman will. his favorite boss. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> that's <laughs> true actually. Will asked ask him at the Vanderbilt Wake Forest uh, game. Nice. I was right behind my head. <laughs> um, I think that I think that Vandy and the the Wake Forest Vandy game was closer than it appeared. And I think uh, right now Arkansas is a much better program. I think that they probably beat Wake Forest. So, going back to our predictions, talk about oh. the Wake Forest game, just because we got a bit on a tangent again. But yeah, we, we said... That's what we do. We <laughs> said... No, I know, and I, I love it, but uh, <laughs> we said Wake, We said one of, one of the biggest liabilities coming into the season could be our secondary. Yeah. And, and I think the Wake was, Forest game was the game that, that proved us right, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. I think, I, furthermore, even the Ole Miss game. Yeah. Because, look, look at the second half. Look at the second half. This All they did was pass the ball. entirely because of the second half. Yeah. When they ran it, they ran it, they ran it, we're winning. They passed it, and now we cannot do <laughs> yeah. anything. They would, we don't they, have the pass rush to make up for And, and they yeah. just got those big chunk plays, like 30, 40 yards, to get them down the field, was, which was what killed us in the second there half. three yeah. in a row. Yeah. Three one-play drives for touchdowns in a row. I was, I was young. Uh, it was, that was ridiculous. I remember um, we, we had talked about it, and what I, I think I said during the first episode, if not, I should have, is when it comes to a defense, I think there are two aspects. You obviously have like your run fits. And I think that that is, in my opinion, more of a coaching than talent Mm -hmm. thing. I think if you know your assignments on a defense, you can stop the run. As long as you have like a median like talent level. When it comes to pass defense, first of all, I think players matter more. Oh, 100%. Because you you need need the... You need the... Yeah. Speed and the size and the agility and all of that to be able to handle an SEC wide receiver. And we don't have that right now. <laughs> but secondly, that is okay if you have a dominant pass rush. You have to have either a dominant secondary or a dominant pass rush to have an okay pass defense. We've got neither. And right now we don't have either. And that's hurting us on the passing front. Um, you, like you'll like uh, to agree with you. You'll hear commentators a lot of the time say like, "Oh, that was a coverage sack," or yes. "That was just he," or he got just uh, one of the linemen got beat right off the line. Where, but at the end of the day, they're both sacks. It doesn't matter yeah, how it doesn't it doesn't matter how you get them. Yep. If you have the secondary that can just cover wide receivers long enough for your pass rush to get there, yep. that works. If you have pass rushers that can get there instantly, instantly or much faster than they than an, an average. average pass rush could get. You'll get there, but you you need one of those. You can't not have either. Right. Yeah. And right now I, we're gonna probably get Davion Davis back this uh, this game against Florida, and that's a big like internal pressure guy. Mm-hmm. So I think that will be helpful. Um, but to say that right now, I mean, I think Clark Lee he's doing what it, what he he can with what he has on the roster at the present moment. And I think some yeah. some of it is fun. still the I'm trying to. The rem- I don't want to say remains because that means yeah I mean, the, the what he's left with. yeah some of it is just leftovers for lack of a better word from the Mason era where it's just the guys that he recruited and nothing against any of those guys but just no, they're like all, they're great people but, but like yeah the the talent level is only going to go up from here you have to let there be full turnover mm-hmm. before you can really judge the coach I don't think fairly. you can judge a coach until his fourth year in yeah. the system yes yeah because so that's that's that, yeah that's it. Wash um, um, all unless you're Mason's unless you're guys. Texas A&M, who's already looking to buy out Jimbo Fisher's contract. <laughs> okay, but Jimbo should be doing. Jimbo had the number one recruiting class. Yeah. Jimbo Fisher's real name. Yes. Is it? I, I didn't know that. Oh I my god. So. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up just because I. That's, I, a, that's my second. Thought, so. <laughs> I would. Jimbo. I would believe so. Might just be Jimmy, but um, James. maybe. John James Fisher Jr. John Jacob Jingle Fisherman? <laughs> yeah. He's the only one. He had the same name. <laughs> Dude, people are always yelling. It's crazy. They, yeah. They're shouting at me. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> oh, it derailed me entirely there. So, not to get ahead of ourselves because we're still working our way through the schedule, but 
on the topic of recruiting, yes. how big was that Kentucky win for it? Like how very how much very. Here's the thing, man. When a program is growing, you see growth in two levels in terms of pure wins. One, it's winning games that you should win consistently. Mm-hmm. So that's like we're beating NIU. Yeah. We should be beating Mizzou. Things like that. That's Elon. one way to judge it. Elon, yes. Pe- things and like and that. people, Hawaii. yeah, people criticize us for only beating Elon by as much. But I forget what the final score was, but it was like a closer game. It was that, closer. NIU was closer. But, but like, it's getting. But a win's a win. Yeah, uh, at the end of the day, ETSU the last year. Ones. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Lo- from you're going not, from losing to ETSU, yeah. Wins. Consistently. And then the other side of it is getting upset wins. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing for growth. So something like that, we're beating teams that we're supposed to mo- with a good percentage of the time, and we're getting these weird wins against, like, Kentucky. That's a really good sign for growth, mm-hmm. and I think prospects and, like, kids will see that. Here's why I think that Vandy should only root for Tennessee to be good, okay? Because if Tennessee is this great, great team, mm-hmm. They start taking recruits from Alabama, and they start taking recruits from LSU, and they start taking recruits from other top powerhouses, traditionally like Florida, and that leaves more in-state talent for people like Vandy and Memphis to take, because Vandy doesn't have these recruiting pipelines in Florida, and they don't have them in Alabama or Mississippi, and while that is something that we definitely need to established to become this top tier program right now that's not what we have and so we have to kind of feed off of the middle west tennessee talent that there is in tennessee and if university of tennessee is taking places from everybody else that leaves much more talent for us i think just generally i am a fan of any team rising up to that level i would like to see more like like i don't in terms of like a just pure entertainment level and sports I don't like seeing like the dominance of an Alabama. That's just not fun. No, it's just no. not fun. It's, it's I want to see something way. like there needs to be a greater basketball, parody. more look, like look. like Kansas, Duke, Gonzaga, and like there are like ten teams that are like well, shoot. I don't even know anyone could win it. It's like well, it's a coin toss here. Is it going to be Georgia or whoever? That I, like as a concept, I would like no, to see I, something I, like mm-hmm. that. Like look I'd at like to see Tennessee get look, to that look at look, the look at the look at the uh, NCAA tournament last year. What was the biggest story of the tournament? St. Peter's. Because like everyone every loves everyone loves stuff. a team it that sucks. comes out of nowhere and just beats the teams they're not supposed to beat, and yeah, they lost in the third round, but uh, but like but they beat Kentucky, they I mean, beat the third Purdue. round is not they, a slouch. no, no, I know, yeah, yeah. I know, and they played the and they played the team that went on to make it to the finals, but uh, but I, they they beat Purdue with what's his name, the, Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey. <laughs> oh, Jaden Ivey. Is he doing well in the league? He's doing okay. Um, our, our guy Darius Garland killing it. Absolutely, he like fifty three the other yeah. day. Oh my, no, god. oh my god! And, 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 and he got the, and he got the absolute bag this off season. So shout out to him. He shout got, out Darius. He got, he got like a hundred fifty million dollar deal. Donate or something. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're welcome to the podcast, yeah. give us money. Yeah, <laughs> if we're looking for it's sponsors. like a reverse on a, a deal. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we're looking for other sponsorships. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I just but recording going back to recruiting real quick. I think that it is only good for Vandy that a team like Tennessee is getting so much better. I agree. Um, and like I know that there's like a rivalry which I never understood personally. Me either. Um, I'll be real. Because in my opinion, it's a it's how I imagine Alabama views Tennessee for the past twenty years. <laughs> is it? I mean, like it's just. Like ten- I mean, in the last twenty years, we've beaten Tennessee more than Tennessee's beaten Alabama. Y- yes, <laughs> but sure, yeah. before in the past ten years, Vanderbilt's five and five versus Tennessee. In the twenty, yeah. in like Kyle, the, Kyle Schirmer beat him like three out of the four years. In, he was in here. the in the thirty years before that, we are twenty eight and two. We being Tennessee, we were on a twenty seven <laughs> game win streak before they broke it. Let's just be clear. So we is not Vandy here. We for me, <laughs> for me, we is Tennessee football and Vandy pretty much everything else. Um. That's like that's like being you. <laughs> that's like being a Yankees fan and a Patriots fan. Disagree. I'm from Knoxville. That's true, but like you gotta pick a <laughs> side. You gotta pick a side. You got you gotta pick a side. You gotta pick a side. I go to Vandy and I was born in Knoxville. I gone to UT football games. That's, that's, like that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. There are a lot of people that would disagree. I don't. They're bums. 
That's but, why that's why they don't have podcasts. But <laughs> I think that what would You're be right a, about that. <laughs> what would be what would be a huge thing for not only our program but recruit I guess program includes recruiting. Yeah. But if we beat Florida, if we beat Florida next week, I mean Kentucky is cool and all. And that means that Vandy might be able to leech some of the talent from Kentucky because they don't have, like, a great amount of power schools in Kentucky. Yeah. But if we could beat Florida and we could start saying that we are, you know, a very mid-SEC East team instead of consistently being considered the bottom. Yeah. That's more of a draw than a bunch of bombs. Yeah. Now, what would be better for your recruit for recruiting, in your opinion? Beating Florida or keeping the Tennessee game to within, let's say— Beating Florida. Yeah, I would think that a win. I guess better. yeah, because you look back, because like people remember the result, not the games themselves. Exactly. So yeah. so it, the, the W on the on the yeah. schedule looks Next a lot year, better. No one knows. I mean, if it was close or not. Florida yeah. is a traditionally great it's school Florida. at football. As a yeah. program, a win against Florida is a big deal. And as far as like bigger than football too, as far as SEC schools go, Florida outside of us, Florida is probably the next best academic school. So, like, if, if you have recruits thinking about that as well. Yeah. And Georgia's up and there. Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss is pretty good. Ole Miss up there. But, but, the, but, no, but, no, nah, no. Un- undergrad, absolutely not. Law school, yes. They're like a they're t- I, I have, okay. I, I, I have, I have a buddy who goes to Alabama and he's like, I don't think anybody goes to class here. Wait, are you guys, <laughs> you guys aren't from the South no. before, you, I mean, you, you moved here like near high school. I came here, I, I, I came here freshman year of college. Yeah, so. I was on, yeah, Willem, Willem moved in the like high school. But, in, in high school, we were told that if you made a 26 on the ACT, you could get a full ride at Alabama. Really? And I was told if you made, uh, I believe it was a 30 or a 29 or something like that. Wait, what did you say? You got full ride? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was told it was a 29, but I guess 26, if it's 26. It was my told school, like a... no one ever in history had gotten a 26. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what they didn't tell us. Nobody. Okay, here's the thing. I'd like to take this as a bridge point. To just disrespect the state of Kentucky as a whole. Okay. Y'all a bunch of bums. Okay? We'll love it. Just in general. I lived there for a couple years. I can say it. You guys are bums, man. If any one of you that I know are watching this podcast, you're bums. <laughs> you as a state, you as a university, they lost to uh, Michigan State in basketball too. Losers. Speak, speaking of losers in Kentucky, Louisville hasn't won a game this year in, in, in basketball. Really? Yeah, they've lost to some awful school. They lost to Wright State. What are y'all doing can you, can, as a state? Can, can either of you guys tell me where Wright State University is? It's in Ohio. Isn't yeah, it? okay. Okay, I know if you actually know. <laughs> but, but but yeah, <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I have a buddy who goes to Wright State. But you're, losing, state. you're losing to schools yeah. like that. That, that. that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but joke, like, but funny. all of that. You know how you solve that? Bring back Rick Pacino. But <laughs> Rick Pacino's a darn good coach. Is the issue. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Forget about forget about what like the oh, harassment oh, case. Oh, I, was, I thought I thought it was just like he hired like strippers for his players. I didn't I think. I don't if, think it was harassment. No, was I think it? it was like who he. Who am I think? Is there a? I'm it thinking was a of the, the coach. no. I'm thinking of the other Petrino. Oh, Bobby Petrino. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in state football. Yeah, yeah. That's my different. bad. That's my different. bad. My Rick bad. Rick Petino is just Rick, Rick Petino. Immoral, but I, he isn't like. I think it was like the year. Predator. I think it was like a year they won, uh, either the ACC or like they won the tournament itself. He like hired a bunch of strippers for players and stuff like that. It was for recruits. But, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was for recruits. Oh my <laughs> well, god. It was like kids. But oh, okay, like, okay. In high school. Okay. Okay. We're All right. Eighteen. I, if, if, we can all right, so we're gonna put a, a winning coach. But, dang it. So we're gonna put a really big asterisk on if they weren't eighteen, disregard everything I just said. Yeah, we we're, don't know. <laughs> we're not informed. We're not gonna look it up either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> thing, but yeah, oh, but Kentucky's bums. Now. That just goes Kentucky, to the larger. Come on, now. Will Levitt. Oh, I ne- <laughs> I, I put out a tweet the other day that said I never want to hear the words Will Levis and first round pick in the same <laughs> sentence. Good. Unless the exact word, like the exact structure of that sentence is, Will Levis cannot and should not be a, a first. He's will not and should though. not be a first round pick. He's going to be. He's going to be because teams love quarterback. Te- teams love the big quarterback who has the power arm because they think they can turn him into the next Josh Allen. I don't, do, do, you, do you do you ever watch the pod like the ones that? Yeah. Okay. 
we, I had we have one that's like entitled I think the Will Levis hate episode, <laughs> yeah. and I, I call I call like half of it. I didn't get a chance to watch the yeah. whole thing, but no, I, I talked about that exactly. <laughs> I was talking about how everyone compares him to Josh Allen. The difference is Josh Allen went to Wyoming. Who is in Wyoming? Four people in the whole state. Like he had no coaching. Yeah, Will Levis went to Kentucky. That is an SEC school. Yeah. <laughs> if you cannot be unlocked as a first round talent at an SEC school, there's no hope for you. And it just like. Kentucky fans are such hypocrites, too, because, like, they talk about their program and how good it is and how good of a coach Mark Stoops is and will just hammer all these points. But then when you ask him about why Will Levis is having the awful year he is, he's like, oh, it's because he doesn't have the coaching around him. He doesn't have the offensive Or, though, he doesn't have the the offensive talent around him. But you've just been hyping up all these guys around him, so you can't have it both ways. The thing is, is I don't think that he has a great supporting cast. Well, no. But I think that that is a testament to your coach because in college you have to recruit people. That is part of your job as a coach. Yeah, I just don't think Kentucky as a football program is a bunch of winners. I think in terms of basketball, they're not a bunch of winners either. I think John <laughs> Calipari is a phenomenal recruiting coach. I look He's at, got the pole, man. He's got the pole. But coaching, you can't coach the game I, of basketball. I, I always you said cannot coach J- the game of John basketball. Calipari is just Coach K if he Coach K couldn't coach basketball. Because like it. he That's can, exactly coach, it. coach K to me. He's Coach C. Co- coach, K, coach, <laughs> coach K is the greatest recruiter in college basketball history. Like it's, 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 it's hard to argue. I, I can't stand him, but it's hard to argue that he, he, he just recruits top three NBA picks after top three NBA draft picks. Like, uh, but he can also turn them into NBA Better caliber players. players. And he can win. And, and, and he, can, he can win. Calipari cannot coach. Is it Pari? I don't I've heard both of I also, funny enough, you bring him up. I met somebody at uh, at a restaurant, the, like, within the last few weeks. I think it was actually for the Vandy UK game. And he said he he was an intern under Calipari when he was in college. And he said John Calipari might be, like, one of the worst people he's ever met personally. That's so funny. Just, just like, That's he's hilarious. just, like, just, like, ridicules his staff, like, ridicules, like, his, like, who, who he presents himself to be on the camera is not who he is off the camera. Here's the thing. When you see that guy on the camera, he's a talker. He can he he could sell used cars. Yeah. I would get robbed, blind by John Calipari if he was selling me a car. He'd be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him and Sutton I'll Bennett. I'll cut you a deal. Bad financial decisions as is, they would ruin you. Lex- Lex- Lexington and Ath- Lexington and Athens are gonna have the most successful car salesman, <laughs> car <laughs> business. Man. He oh can talk God. the talk and do his little thing. He's great on TV. He's great in these interviews. And he brings in great players out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, he's a recruiter, and he's a schmoozer, and he's a talker. Recruiter and schmoozer? He's That's a, a bar. Schmo- he schmo- yeah. Right, this but he can't beat St. Peter's. <laughs> <laughs> With that random white guy. <laughs> Doug? Oh, Doug. What was his last name? Doug Eater. Doug Eater. <laughs> oh, dude. St. Peter's, speaking of them, their coach... Immediately, uh, uh, yeah, to Providence. See, no, I think what's Seton Hall. I think what's Seton Hall. That's it. He yeah, Seton Hall, and they just beat. Seton well, Peter's well, it's because team. he played college ball at Seton Hall. I mean, it makes sense. And, and like, it hurts. yeah, it does. It hurts. It does. You hate to see it, man. I wish St. Peter's <laughs> on the program nothing but the best. So before we fully move on to basketball talk, do you want to just wrap up our rest of the season projections for next year? Um, I mean, I don't I, know. I, I think I, honestly, we can do projections until we know recruits. I was going to say, I think honestly we do lose the next two games as much as I hate to admit is it. Is Florida, Florida's here, is it? Yes. I believe. I think it they're is. both here. I think they're both yeah, here. Yeah, we, we ended on. I, oh, uh, yeah, they are both here. Yeah, <laughs> I think that... Are, are you going to be here for the game? Or? I'm not. Oh, no. I was, it, you're going back home to Knoxville, right? Yeah. Because yeah. um, it's over Thanksgiving break. It's yeah, a Saturday after a, Thanksgiving. I'll, I'll be at the game. Come see me. <laughs> it's probably going to be cold, bro. Um, I just... I'm hoping they have that plan to... They have that plan to checker the stadium. And it, if, if I have to watch that on TV, it's going to be rough. I don't think <laughs> they're going to. I, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter being like, "That's it's it's Mandy Senior Day." We, they sh- like I've seen Tennessee fans say we shouldn't do that to their seniors, <laughs> and um, that's a Mark big. That's that a, off your bingo card. Yeah, guys. yeah. Tennessee like, being morals? respectful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's nuts, man. Yeah, it was what? crazy. But I think that anything can happen. I would true. bet that we lose both games, but I think that there is a. De- I would say there's a 35 percent chance we beat Florida. I would agree with that. I think there's a 35% chance, but I still would guess the 65% chance that we lose. <laughs> so, I think the Tennessee. I'm, gonna be I'm not going to say scoring project predictions, just because <laughs> those games can go any which way. Yeah. 
But I think we lose the Florida game by, I'll say 14 or less. I'll say two possessions. Two possessions. I would agree. I think we lose that game by two possessions or less. And I don't even want to think about the Tennessee game. Tennessee, we're going to get blown out by about 50 points. I think, I think. (laughs) It's going to be reminiscent of the Georgia game. And and I think they'll leave Hendon Hooker in there for most of the game in case, because No, that's Joe Milton will come in at third that's quarter. Disrespectful. But yeah, he'll light but there's there's a, there's a real possibility that that's Hendon Hooker's last game ever. It's just what do you mean bowl last game. game ever? Oh, the bowl game. Ah, bowl. true. <laughs> Completely <laughs> forgot about that. I forgot about that. Joe I was gonna say because I'm thinking I'm thinking like if they don't make the playoffs, but nah, I do. I forgot. Nah, I totally yeah, forgot about bowl. Well, 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 the bowl. Yeah. The bushes baked beans bowl. The Capri Sun bowl. The fact that Kentucky is gonna get to go to the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl <laughs> yeah. just makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always thought about starting like an L, like a like a like a shell company just to, just to sponsor a bowl just game a and give it whatever name I want. That's so funny. They're going to go no, to the Mobile, be, Alabama it's Bowl. Be, uh, Stetson Bennett Buick Bowl. That's it. That's his dealership's going to be a bowl game. But, um, I always pictured him as like a Dodge Ram guy. Dodge Ram guy should be Ram. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen... Um, but, I'm, uh, Joe Milton will come in by the third quarter, yeah. and he's going to light us up, too. Yeah, Joe I, Milton's I, like, I, I can see him in the first half. <laughs> I don't think this game's going to be pretty. And I think he'll beat us just as bad, if not worse, than Hendon Hooker. I, I think Joe Milton is a Joe better Milton's quarterback strengths, than Hendon Hooker. Joe Milton's strengths are, what are we He can throw the ball 50 yards, we cannot cover. Oh, God, he can throw the ball 70 10. yards, man. I will say, as much as I, you guys know my dislike for Tennessee sports, but... Uh, that vi- there was a video that came out of Hendon Hooker d- conducting the band, yeah. and in the background, Joe Milton is just like dancing, and I was like, it's it's the funniest it's thing so in the world. <laughs> it's the funniest thing in the world. He's just jamming out in the back. They're like legitimately good friends. No, no, yeah, yeah. and cool. they seem like like they all seem like great guys. great guys. Yeah. I saw Hendon Hooker in person. He walked right by. We we had a moment. We didn't I, have a moment. No, we didn't. He's, he's a cool dude. I he's saw cool. I saw. Uh, Joe Burrow and Justin Jefferson, and Jamar Chase in person that year. They came to Vandy, really, and and you, smoked smoked us oh, like six. We were there. Smoked us like sixty six nothing. We were there. Yeah. Was that was bad. that was saw, y'all's freshman year, right? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that was it was that. our first game of the year because it was an all SEC schedule. Yes. Well, when I went, we got blown out. And we left like the third. And that was Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Jamar Justin, Chase Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. Wait, 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 Clyde, yeah, Edward, Clyde, uh, All of the Pat, offensive Patrick, line. Patrick, Patrick Queen was on that defense. There, yeah. was, there was another few other That's good. So Christian so Fulton was on yeah. that defense. That. Yeah, that was the the national I've championship year. Stuff in my days, boys. And, that was that was the year before the national. And, and that? just to give Tennessee their flowers, yeah, yeah. just to give the Tennessee their flowers, the moment I consider us real national title title contenders, and I think all the moment a lot of the LSU fan base considered us national title contenders that year was when we beat Alabama. True. And I think beating Alabama. That's just a big deal. Does just, wonders yeah, program no super. It doesn't matter. Alabama, they could say they're having a down year, whatever. A down but, year for them is a top ten. Uh, uh, yeah, a, 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 a down. A, their worst year in how long is ten and two, <laughs> which is probably what they're gonna finish this year. Yeah, and then they're gonna go <laughs> beat somebody up in a bowl. Game. Yeah, <laughs> like RIP, RIP, whoever has to play them. Yeah, because <laughs> you know Nick Saban's gonna make sure they blow them out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for football. Yeah, hold so, on, I need to have my moment. Okay. In the first episode. Oh. I made a statement. Well, hold on. Yeah. I Continue. made a statement. We've all seen it. I've been bragging about it to every friend I have, which is all four. <laughs> if you um, haven't seen it, I'm going to try to cut it here. At Kentucky, I think we lose. I think that's a, I think that's a dub. <laughs> I'm saying that's a five. That's five wins there. Y'all can disagree with me. You think we're going to beat Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully Chris got that in there. If I didn't, it's going to be embarrassing. (laughs) Um, So as you can see in that clip, if you didn't see the clip, I'm that guy. I'm simply a generational talent. I would agree. I'm built different. Do you know what? I think it was because of me. I manifested it for I think you might have to change your name to Will Him. Because you are him. You are him. (sighs) That's it. I ain't got nothing else to say. I can't sure. that. You, you, you are him. That's my, that's my <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's quickly go through basketball. I know we talked about basketball and how we thought we'd actually be a better team without Scotty Pippen. We were wrong. I think that we, we have a chance wrong. to gel. Yes. Give us a little while. We beat Temple. But just I beat think Nova. if we don't have anybody that's like, I like stability with an offense. I like consistency. 
Scottie Pippen took the ball on the court every single time. Mm-hmm. And as much as I don't like him, like, not to say I don't like him, but, like, I don't know. He wasn't... Uh, hmm. It doesn't matter. I, I would like to see some consistency. We're at the, um... We were at the, oh, God. The, the, the Southern Miss game? or the, no, oh, no, the first the, one. The first one. Uh, oh, Memphis. Memphis. Yeah. We were at the Memphis game. We're going to Penny Hardaway ball itself. Um, he's so bald. So got, bald. It, it, it's, it's, we've got five guys on the court. I have no idea who we go, who we go to. I'm yeah. like, I don't really know any of you. I don't trust any of you. I don't know what to do as an offense. The here. thing is, is, and it makes me And it was just jacking up threes the entire game. It's, which, just, which, it's, it's, it's missing shots. It's not getting boards. It's... Jordan Generally Wright. Generally losing. I don't know. In the in, in, in the Memphis game, we showed hustle on the boards, and and the Memphis game, we looked good. It was we we were crashing. We were we were crashing the boards. Okay. The final, it was be, It was better than it was the last. The final score looks better than the game was. Though. It was a yeah. bad game. It was a bad game, man. It was, it was, it was difficult. It was. It was one of those. It was tough. Southern man. Miss, we didn't. I actually didn't watch, but we got we got beat pretty bad by a pretty nice. terrible team. We beat Temple though. We, we just beat Villanova. That's so by the transit property, we're better well, than Villanova. Villanova is dropped out of the Villanova beat that we're above them. Thus, more transit. Well, Villanova <laughs> has dropped out of the top twenty-five for the first time since twenty nineteen. That's tough, man. Because no Jay Wright. True. No Jay Wright. Who can I go? Can I rant about Jay Wright for a second? Jay Wright's not a Villanova. No, he's he, no he's like assistant to the dean now or something. He has like a special role with the with the president of the school. Who's he's coaching the basketball. I, I'm team? not sure. This is devastating for the game. I'm not sure. Yeah, Jay I Wright. Love Jay Wright. Oh, Jay Wright, great coach. I'm. I never had any ill feelings towards Villanova. One of my cousins went there. He got to see two national titles there. But uh, Jay Wright is the biggest hypocrite. One of the biggest hypocrites up there, up there with Dabo Sweeney, who I hate for separate all reasons. But both of them, before NIL and all that stuff became a deal, were the biggest opponents to college athletes receiving any kind of like payment or whatever or endorsements, deals, any of that. Jay Wright, I think, actually like had like like meetings about this with the NCAA and all that stuff. Um, and then about a month later, signed contract, signed a contract where he was getting made, making like $10 million a year or something like that. So it's, it's hard to see like, it's hard to have those stances and not the immediate reaction of just be like, oh, you just want more money for yourself. Yeah, I mean, like, it would be nice to see some consistency within beliefs and actions. Get your bag. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I respect <laughs> it. I mean, you got, you got, you got respect. To chase I, the bag. I, here's the thing. <laughs> I could hate nil deals with all my heart. I don't really care about. But, but, I have no opinion. but get your bag. They offer me ten million dollars. Hendon Hooker and French's monster in there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. did, he, did he get the mustard? Board? Yeah, he's he's. It is, it is him, right? Yeah. I wanted that NIL deal. They were one of the people I name dropped in the one episode where I was begging for sponsors. I named Frenchies. I'm, and they didn't ever look at I'm, my I'm, I'm more of a Grey Poupon guy myself. Oh, what? fancier than us. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like a Dijon ketchup or something. Not a mustard, rather. But. Dijon uh, ketchup, Chris? I'm going to make that. It's going to be weird. Oh, okay. Um, basketball. Ball. It's like... It's life. Um, True. It's Jordan Wright and Miles Studi, in my opinion, are our two most reliable players. Yes. However, none of them have ever been the primary ball handler for long stretches of time. They need to step up into that role and be that person if we are going to be successful. I like Ezra Manjan. Yeah. I think he's good. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 don't think that a, I don't think there should be a single possession that Jordan Wright is on the floor that he should not touch the ball. I want Jordan Wright to run the offense. I agree. I don't know if I want him like carrying the ball up just because he's big. I, I like if Ezra. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. the ball. It doesn't matter. It's semantics. I want him with the ball making plays. Mm-hmm. He's a winner. He's like a crun- crunch time, last possession of the game. Legitimately. He's the guy you're getting. I saw he, the if if game. we need a three, he's, he's the guy you're three. getting. I saw the Alabama game. He's that guy. He's the guy he you're getting the ball it. to in crunch time. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, I think that we actually have a lot of potential with these kids. I'd say yes. We're, it's just so discordant. They're just, we, we're playing like four freshmen. That Nobody like, knows what they're doing. And yeah, and they're just, they're, they're, they take time to adjust to the college game. And then, yeah, you, know, yeah, you can't blame it, you know? But you at the same time, and, and, it's, it now, but. and it's astounding to me when you look at all these things where I don't want to say our basketball team is rebuilding, but we're restructuring in the sense that we just lost Scotty Pippen Jr., who was so crucial to our team last year. Yeah. And that's going to take time. So, like, I think that it's not 
wrong to say that we're rebuilding. I think that it's Rebuild. rebuilding is it, it's not a traditional rebuild because I, I think so like, many people associate it with like rebuilding is just another word for like but oh you're not doing well at all and you like I think I, mean, I think I there are like rebuilding intrinsically means that at one point you were. Uh, so we're just building. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we've never been. We're not on a rebuild. But we're on a build. I, I think that there, I think there are tiers of teams in okay. any college sport, <clears throat> and it's oh, you're really outperforming these kind of mid-level recruits, and then it's you get these good recruits, and so you are a better team, but you're not great yet because one, you don't have consistent gr uh, great recruits, and two, you're having to play them really, really early. And so that's where we're at right here. And I think that as they get more experience, we're going to go to like the higher. It's a natural point. progression of growth. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that what we're seeing is anything surprising. I would have liked to have beaten Southern Miss, but That'd I don't think. Cool, but you can't. Weren't we like seven, seventeen point favorites yeah, coming into that? Yeah. Ugh, Jesus. It was Christ. just. It was. Bad. But I think that as the season continues, we're going to only get better. And I don't think that we should judge the team based on these things. I like stack. I like the staff. He just got, he just got a red extension. Uh, I, I, had, I, I, I had a friend text me, uh, I think it was Monday this week, and he's like, have you guys fired Stackhouse yet? And I'm like, we actually just gave him an extension. But like, it amazes me that not only him, but so many other people are calling for Stack's head already. That's L true. Like, that's, that's I don't absurd, know. I don't man. know how active you guys are on like Vandy fan Twitter. I'm not. But like, oh, I'm a little bit. Actually. But like, you are Vandy fan Twitter. E everybody's everybody's calling for Stacks Head that I've seen, and, that's I, ridiculous. and I'm just it's like, just wrong. That's look, like, it's just opinion. yeah. Stupid. And and also, if you fire him, we start this process all over again. Who are you getting? You, you like, like, we can't sign a good coach. Like, 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 we we start this process all over again of like. If at least Stack can point to this and be like, we're building something. Like we have like this yeah. young core that we can build around. Like Colin Smith is what like a four or five star. He's not a five star, but he's I, four think, star. I think he's four star. He's a four star. He's good. And he's solid. Yeah. Yeah. And like we have like, the talent is raw, but it's there. Isaiah West has signed his NIL deal. I don't know if you know who Isaiah, Isaiah West is. Number one Tennessee kid. Oh uh, yeah, I've, the, I've, I've, I've heard things about. Number one overall basketball recruit in the state of Tennessee, committed to Vanderbilt. What is he like nationally? I have no idea. Interesting. I don't like to know. But like he is, he's he's from a uh, a town that's thirty minutes away from here, and he is. Where's he from? Springfield. Um, really? Yeah. Oh. Um, and he's also committed to coming on the pod. That's where my. English oh, that's awesome. That's he, awesome. He said he would next year. We have a shirt. We mm -hmm. do. No, we don't. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't make him a shirt. But um, gotta get on that. Well. It'd be difficult. Um, <laughs> with that being said, I think that. Stack's a good coach. I think that this basketball season is going to go fine. Yeah. And I think next season is going to be a lot better. I think next season will be better than last season. Yeah. That's my, that's my long-term estimate. So, do you think we make the tournament next year? I still think we have a chance of making the tournament this year. Oh, I think we do, too. If, like, if I had to say one way either way, I don't think we would. I, like, I would much more comfortably bet on next year. <laughs> sure. But, but, like, but, like but it's, it's not, out, out, of, it's out, not out, sure. it's not out of the realm of possibility that we yes. make the tournament this yeah, year. Yeah, it's a long season. You'll get your guys together. You'll get it. You know, it'll work. I agree. We still got time with Studi and three Miles games. And we actually are we, QMB. Are we, we played tonight. QMB. I look. I'm in a group chat with a uh, a bunch of like random people. Show them the doors in my group chat, not me personally. <laughs> um, I just have to plug the podcast. I don't really <laughs> look at it. Everyone's want to see though. It's like a bunch of Vandy oh, no, fan pages. Tomorrow. And um, they hate on QMB so much. I was gonna say the opposite. I think I like he's somebody. He's a glue guy. Who, who, I love QMB. who we need? We need to get more involved. Yeah. The thing he's is, good. he can rebound. He hustles. He can run a little bit of offense. The passes he makes, he makes good decisions. I'd say. It's, he's a little shaky, but like in my opinion, you have the three bigs that you have are Lee Dort, um, Liam, and QMB. Lee Dort is easily going to be the best of the three. I don't know if he is right now, but he is huge. Is a defensive presence. Did you see that block yeah. in the Memphis oh game? Oh my god! Um, and then there was one that was a foul, so but like he, it didn't count. But it was it, it was him. Block. It was him and a guard who both blocked the ball off the backboard. <laughs> it was amazing. But with that being said, I think that he is going to be the best out of them. Yeah. And I think that Liam probably provides more than QMB. Yes. Um, but I love Quentin. Man. I do. I think Quentin should play right now, but I I wouldn't be mad if throughout the season he probably got less opportunities. I think you phase out Quentin to phase in Lee Dormar. I agree. That's just what you do. You know what I mean? And the one thing I saw, I saw a bit in the Memphis game, but like throughout the games, it there seems to be like 
almost a hesit hesitancy to drive to the basket with this team. Yeah, Jordan yeah. Wright is amazing driver of the and, basket. And it's like... I don't know why everyone's afraid of him. And, it's, and I think part of that is inexperience. Like we said, we're such a young group that maybe <laughs> they're just not physically... Nervous. Our guards are small, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think... But that's something that I think will come with time. You guys will get the confidence... They'll start being able to expand their game more. Yeah. And that's something that, hey, you, you drive to the basket, you, you draw a foul at least, you're shooting two. I think it's just... Or one and one. It's <laughs> also just hard when two of our first four guards are Ezra Manjan and Trey Thomas, who are about 5'6". Yeah. Like, it, it's... I saw in the Memphis game, Ezra put an amazing move on his defender... Went in the paint, and he had a perfect Miles Studi pass open for a three. But he went for a layup against a center, he and stuffed. he got stuffed into the fifth row <laughs> because there was no reason he should have attempted it was that layup. You can't teach size. Tall, no, man. you can't teach size, and you can't teach height. So and like, <laughs> like the, yeah, but he's he's going to be good. He's talented, yeah. but he is small and should if he drives if he does not have a, like an open Dish. crafty layup, Dish. but Dish. give it to the open three yeah. guy. Come on, also, there's Miles Studi, who is one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Yes. I don't know about that, actually, but I would like to believe so. But yeah, this is actually getting to be a really long episode. No. Uh, we probably need a... It is almost 7.15. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, we'll have you... Yeah. We, we'll, you want to come on during ba right before baseball season? We'll have more predictions for yeah. baseball side? Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'll just leave with one prediction for this year. Okay. Uh, for baseball season. Enrique Bradfield Jr. is winning the Golden Spikes Award. I think that's a very, very solid He is. He is now? Yeah. I think this he... This is last year eligible. <laughs> this I, is his season. I think he, <laughs> right now, is arguably the best player in all of college baseball. I would agree. And it's... I don't want to say he's been overshadowed, but just because of the talent pool around him that we did lose. Like, we last year was... Uh, last year was the Rocker and Lighter year or two years ago? Two, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago, and last year we still had a crazy talented team, team and lost a lot of the guys to the draft. And it's just like now he is the guy. He is going to be the not only the leader of the team, he's yeah. going to be our best player, arguably both offensively and defensively. And I think he's excited to show it. Yeah, he's just in a position. Though. Yeah, like freshman yeah. year dogged out, but you're a freshman. You know still I mean? one fresh freshman of the year. Exactly. Yeah. Last year. Last was year it was a growth year. I think he, 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 I think now is when you when he clicks. Yeah. The thing is, is he fell in love. He, in my opinion, had a better season last year than his rookie year. Yes, but, but it felt like he could have done a little better. I feel like. It felt like everyone. Well, everyone put the expectation that he was going to become the best player in baseball that year. That's true. And so when he, and when he when you didn't that's, when he did, when he when he was one of the top five instead of the top one, like, everyone yeah. were like disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this is also, he fell in love with his power a little too much. I, he, yeah. He, he was he was swinging for home runs as a leadoff batter, and I'm like. I respect it because you can you can hit them yeah. occasionally, but, I, but get on just get on base, steal talked, second, steal third, and you're. <laughs> I talked <laughs> every every single game that we played baseball. I said I would rather have Enrique Bradfield hit a single than a home run, <laughs> and I still believe that because I think it, he has a greater impact on the mental part of oh, the game yeah. if he steals two bases than if he hits a home run. That's, I, that's debilitating. <laughs> I, I've been watching baseball all of my life, and he is co college recently, more recently, obviously, since, mm -hmm. since I started coming here, but he is the first player I've ever seen tag up on a fly out to the shortstop. Oh, that was a beautiful play. I remember that game. A, a fly out to the shortstop. And he tagged up from third and went and he, home. And he, he, like, he like slid. It wasn't close. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk uh, about yeah. baseball more. I would say I know we got to wrap I'll it up. We'll come on the podcast again. We'll have David again. <sighs> Lord knows that we'll have another hour and a half long yeah. one probably. Um, it's a pleasure as always, guys. Yeah, of course. Um, with that being said, yeah. uh, we'll follow see you guys us. next week. Follow us. Follow, follow us on Instagram. Our you know All the links will be in the description. Buy the shirts I made. They're in. They're on my Instagram Ooh. bio. Buy them. Oh, um, yeah. Subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll probably put a little card at the start because we didn't say at the start. And Lord knows, not a lot of people make it through the hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with that being said, this has been shown the door all the way from the Curb Center Studios at Vanderbilt University, and we will see you guys next week.